Meeting order. This is a legally constituted meeting of the Town of Chile Planning Board. Legal notice of this meeting has been posted in the Guides to Chile News and in the bulletin board in the front vestibule of the Town Hall. If you could please silence your phones and any pages you may have. And please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the event of an emergency, please use the exits in the front and the rear of the room. We will proceed in the order of the agenda unless uh, otherwise noted. Please, uh, when called, please proceed to the podium, state your name, and if you're representing an applicant, indicate the applicant's name. Re review the details of your application. Planning board members and side table participants will address questions and concerns to the applicant or the representative. For the public hearing portion of the meeting, upon completion of comments from the board and the side table, anyone wishing to comment on the application will be heard. If you wish to speak, please wait to be recognized by the chairperson. Stand and state your name and address for the record. Please speak so that all can hear your comments and address all comments and questions to the chairperson. Now introduce the board members and the side table participants. To my far left is Joe Defendis. Matt Emmons, Al Hallaby, I'm Mike Nyhan, Glenn Hyde, David Cross has been excused, Paul Blozier. Our side table, our planning board council is Matthew Piston. Our building uh, department manager is Paul Wanzenreed, and our town engineer is Michael Hanscom. Our recording secretary tonight is Sandra Hewlett. I am going to take the agenda out of order. I'm going to um, have the recommendation go first. It's the application of Jack Hill, 77 Chestnut Drive. Rochester, New York, 14624, applicant owner for a recommendation to rezone the parcel of land from R115 to NB at the property located at 2675 Charlie Avenue, the R115 district. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Chile I have is on his neighborhood business and this property is contiguous to my property thus would not be considered a spot zone. The surrounding neighborhood is comprised of a pharmacy, church, group home, park <coughs> complex, the, um, 2669 the address is a uh, Dentistry. Plus, there's other uh, small businesses on that road that's in between that stretch of road between on Charlie Ave between Pixley Ave and Westside Drive. There's also a uh, insurance agency in there, and I've just seen an advertisement that someone does mails on it. Um, so, you know, it's not going to, you know, really tough the character of that neighboring environment and the uh, the size of the parcel and the uh, structure really doesn't lend itself to uh, high traffic or you know intensive uses or traffic counts according to many property or parking 
uh, requirements. So, uh, with that said, I'm asking the uh, planning board to take this into consideration. What's your planned use for the uh, the property? I want to run the property and the individual uh, looking to run it is looking to make it a, um, it's for event planning and uh, guests weddings and uh, afterlife celebrations and that sort of thing. So they're going to use that as an office to plan events for? Yeah. Is, okay. Right. It would be less traffic. I mean, as far as like the impact is concerned, I'm just going to be going on there within that immediate uh, environment or neighboring uh, residences is there will be significantly less traffic and use as you know, than it did when it was eight or something. Okay, Joe. No, I'm all set. No comments. Big curiosity questions. How all of a sudden did this thing come about? I, did you just purchase this property? I purchased it in uh, October of 22, and uh, I tried getting this rented out as a salon. Uh, there was an individual that tried doing just that salon slash barber shop, and he ended up being a uh, it was a bad kind of well, I, know, I know this thing's been in existence for 50 <coughs> plus years. Yes, sir. How long has it been vacated where nobody's actually used this? Just since I actually, the uh, individual that were operating out of there, they signed a five year lease commitment on it to take it for the next five years. And uh, once I closed and let them know, you know, some of my plans I wanted to do was a place and the parking lot was a shambles. I mean, it was to the point where my fall guy wasn't even going to fall anymore because it was that bad. Mm -hmm. So I repaid that whole parking lot and then I just, um, that was um, in 23 and then this year here I ended up getting sealed. All right, but other than the fact that possibly a new paint job, you don't plan on doing any other things to this building, correct? No, there was some siding. There was a lot of siding panels <coughs> from it. And there was uh, the picture window, the large window in the front had a big crack in it. Mm -hmm. And I had the guy next door. He has a glass business, and he changed the glass in it. And uh, I did the, um, we did the replacement of the fur and strips for attaching the Final sign back on. So everything is looking pretty good. Um, um, that's all I have. Uh, no mm -hmm. questions. Anything from the uh, side table? <coughs> questions? Okay. So there's no public hearing on this, correct, Paul? And um, this is just a recommendation to the town board. They'll be taking care of seekers, so there'll be no seeker either. So any further discussion from the board on this? I mean, this has been a, some sort of a small business since every I can remember. Yeah, it's, so. it's been there for an eternity, and like I said, I, from what his description of what he wants to do with it, it doesn't yeah. seem like it's out of character. All right. Okay. In that case, um, we'll take a vote on a recommend to to recommend or not recommend. So the vote will be to recommend or not recommend. The application of Jack Hill, 77 Chestnut Drive, Rochester, New York, 14624. Applicant owner for a recommendation to rezone the parcel from R115 to NB at the property located at 2675 Chiley Avenue in the R15 district. Yes. 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 I also vote yes. So this recommendation will go to the town board. The town board will have a public hearing and hear this. Um, and then based on their decision, it may or may not come back to us. All right. Thank you. You have a good night. <clears throat>
Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Peter Bars with BME Associates, uh, appearing this evening on behalf of Rounding Third LLC. Uh, with me this evening from Rounding Third LLC is Matt Lester and Anthony Gizzi. Uh, they are the uh, developers, uh, or uh, the redevelopers maybe, of what is the existing Walgreens uh, store uh, that is located at 3127 Chai Lai Avenue, which is at the uh, southeast corner of the Chai Lai Avenue Paul Road intersection. We're here this evening to request preliminary and final site plan <coughs> approval for the redevelopment of the property or the building, and also a special use permit um, uh, for outdoor uh, dining at this uh, location. Currently, the property is, it's 3.2 acres. It contains the existing single story uh, former Walgreens uh, pharmacy. Uh, the building size is 14,860 square feet. Uh, it has access, a full service access onto Chai Lai Avenue, and then it has a right in, right out only access onto Paul Road. Uh, the, the redevelopment of this property really is focused on the building itself. Uh, we are not proposing any changes to the access uh, to Chai Lai Avenue or to Paul Road, or even to what is currently the development footprint of the 3.2 acres. The property is zoned GB general business, and the intended redevelopment of this building uh, would comply uh, with, with the zoning district. What the applicant is proposing to do is repurpose the existing building into a multi-tenant uh, retail and food service use, uh, looking at um, uh, breaking up that existing 14,000 plus square foot building, uh, probably to serve five different individual tenants. But it will all occur within the existing building itself. Um, we are, there will be minor facade changes proposed uh, to the building um, with uh, the addition of tenants. We'll be adding additional doors uh, and additional windows along uh, the north and uh, west and south sides of the building. Uh, in addition to that, um, there will be additional signage uh, proposed for the building itself. Um, we did meet earlier this evening uh, with the AAC to go over uh, the proposed facade changes, um, and I, we believe that meeting went uh, very well. All of the changes that will occur will use the same types of materials and colors. So basically, there's really going to be no dynamic change to the existing building as it appears today, uh, except for what is just necessary to accommodate the additional tenants. There are minor changes proposed to the footprint of the building itself. Uh, first of all, there are two loading docks that are located on the east side of the building, which is um, uh, on the Paul Road side of the building. Those two loading docks will be removed. Uh, there is an existing drive-through canopy on the north side of the building, on the Chai Lai Avenue side of the building. That will be removed. Uh, there's no changes proposed to the primary building footprint itself, that gross floor area of 14,860 square feet. So as we said, basically what you see there today for the building is what you will see uh, post uh, redevelopment, re rehab. The site improvements that would be uh, done as part of this redevelopment will be minor. Um, and it really will be uh, within the context of around the building perimeter. There is no proposed expansion to the pavement areas or parking areas. As I mentioned earlier, the development footprint that's there today uh, will remain unchanged. Uh, the lot coverage will remain the same. Uh, the building coverage, which is 10.6% of the property <coughs> area, remains unchanged. And the code allows a maximum building coverage of 30%. So we're well within that. Minor site improvements would consist of uh, uh, adding uh, pickup windows. Uh, there are at this time contemplated two food service operators and they both would have um, mobile order pickup uh, um, windows, one on the east side and possibly one on the north side. Uh, as part of that, the, the pavement areas in those areas will be reconfigured. Basically, we'll be introducing medians, landscape medians, to create the drive through or pick up window aisles and separate that from bypass and through traffic. And that's all illustrated on the site plans that were provided to you. Uh, in addition, 
uh, as because of to accommodate the food service operators at the northwest corner of the site and at the southeast corner of the site we will um, expand the concrete walks in those areas to create two concrete patios uh, ranging in size of around 675 to 750 square feet. These would be large enough to accommodate up to four outdoor tables or 16 seats, and they would have a decorative fencing, aluminum fencing put around it that's been detailed on the site plans also. Uh, with regards to utilities, the only work that would be necessary is because of the food service operation, a grease trap would be added to the sanitary service lateral, but there are no other changes provide, uh, proposed for utility services uh, to the building because the existing services are adequate. Um, the only pavement work that will be done will be uh, around the perimeter of the building uh, to accommodate the new medians that I've already mentioned that we would be adding and also for the expansion to create the concrete patio areas. There is no site grading proposed or required uh, with this building redevelopment. We are proposing to revamp the landscaping on the property uh, since the property, uh, Walgreens uh, left uh, the site, uh, the landscaping has basically become tired uh, and old, so what we're looking at doing is revamping that landscaping. The median areas will be landscaped, and then we're also looking at um, uh, expanding the landscaping around the existing uh, project sign and also the existing uh, town of Chilai sign that's located at the corner there. Landscaping would be a mix of shrubs, uh, perennials, and ornamental uh, grasses. We're looking for low profile plantings because if you're familiar with the topography of that building, that building sits below Chilai Avenue especially, so we're very reluctant to put anything that will grow of any magnitude because it will be screening the tenants' uh, spaces uh, and, it'd be, uh, and they really rely on visual uh, being able to be seen um, as part of uh, uh, of, of their location at that area. So we'd be looking at low profile plantings in those areas. Um, we are proposing a new dumpster enclosure up at the north end of the site, that dumpster enclosure, uh, and this was discussed with the AAC earlier this evening, uh, would be a masonry uh, structure of materials and colors uh, similar to uh, the existing building. So that, that tan color you see of the existing building would be the color of, of the masonry block that would be utilized for the um, dumpster enclosure. There is no proposed changing to the site lighting, the existing lighting uh, on the property. The, it's basically around the perimeter of the parking lot. Those pole mounted lights will remain <coughs> in place. Uh, we did provide lighting information on the photometrics to show that there's no spillage off the site. There may be, there will likely be additional building lighting because with each new door entry, there will be soffit lighting or whatever is, is required as, as part of code there to provide lighting. We did discuss with the AAC any lighting for signage uh, would be uh, addressed with, with the sign package. Parking on the property, as I mentioned, we're not looking at expanding the existing parking lot. Uh, uh, we're going to utilize the existing parking lot. We are looking at providing 67 parking spaces uh, on the property, which will include four ADA uh, accessible spaces. Those spaces will be located <coughs> in the, the southwest corner of the property, which is primarily where the main ex old Walgreens entrance was. We've located them at that corner because that basically allows those ADA spaces to be, uh, if parking there, you have an even distribution to all of the uh, potential tenants that would occupy um, uh, the building because their primary access points will be along the west side or the south side of the building. With the multiple tenants, we did go through the town code uh, and determined uh, per the analysis of the code that 76 spaces would be required. Uh, so therefore, what we are going to be requesting from the planning board is an approval for land banking, that difference between the 67 spaces that are provided and the 76 code required spaces. We've land banked those spaces off the Chilai Avenue entrance, um, nine spaces total. At 67 spaces, we are providing parking at one space per 207 square feet of, of uh, net leasable space. 
the applicant and consulting with them, we don't anticipate the need for the total 76 spaces. That's why we, we look to land bank nine of them. And this is based on um, practical need. Uh, first of all, multi-tenant uh, parcels like this, uh, you are able typically to apply a shared parking credit. In other words, somebody there may visit more than one of the tenants um, that, uh, that are located there. And the Institute of Transportation Engineers say that credit can be anywhere from 15 to 20 percent, depending on the makeup of those tenants. But we did not apply that in our calculation. Also, uh, pickup window, mobile app windows in the post-COVID world has really reduced uh, the demand on parking as it relates to indoor seating. More people are just going, picking up their food or whatever and, and uh, leaving the site. So there's been a reduction in demand on, um, on parking in that regard. But most importantly, we're using the applicant's operational experience in developing, leasing, and managing similar multi-tenant properties throughout the area. Uh, uh, they've been doing this for, for a number of years now and have learned what is uh, the proper uh, parking ratio. So uh, with that, we're looking at just utilizing the parking we have. We feel comfortable that the, that the amount is adequate for the tenants that will be there. But in the event, if not, we do have the land bank parking there uh, in order to comply with the code. One thing we also did, uh, we did have a traffic study uh, prepared. Even though we don't hit some of the thresholds that the New York State DOT or the Monroe County DOT uh, look at, they use a 100 trip, peak hour trip uh, generation as kind of a trigger for a traffic study. Uh, we consulted with both the county and the state and also the <coughs> works. But in deference to this board, we did have the traffic study completed for your information. Uh, that was submitted to you. Uh, what that study found, it analyzed the two existing intersection or uh, property access points onto Chilai Avenue and to Paul Road. But it also looked at the Chilai Avenue, Paul Road uh, intersection. What it showed, and uh, let me back up, I'm sorry. Uh, it analyzed the morning peak hour and the evening peak hour, which is standard. But it also looked at the midday peak hour uh, between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Uh, what the study showed, though, was with the redevelopment of a multi-tenant uh, building of this sort, including up to two food service operators, was that the levels of service currently uh, at those three intersections, that there'd be no degradation of those levels of service, that they, they today operate at a satisfactory level of service and will continue to do so uh, in the post-development condition. Um, and as I mentioned, these studies have been, this study has been provided for review, but we believe it, uh, the findings of that study uh, are pretty clear as that uh, there would be no traffic impacts uh, from the redevelopment of this building. Uh, as I mentioned, there are two patios proposed for outdoor dining at this, with this rehabilitation. And as such, in the GB zone, that is a special uh, permitted use. Uh, per section 519C8 of the code. It's, uh, in the code, it's called an outside or outdoor cafe. So we are requesting the planning board to grant that special use permit. Uh, to assist in your review or analysis of that, we did provide you a separate document with our application package that went through uh, two sections of the special use permit code, um, 529N4, which is the review of, I think, seven items as it relates, does the use have an impact on public health, safety, and welfare? And then we looked at section 500-290, which was, I think, 12 or 12 or 14 items that looked at the basic standards of such a use in this area, what had to be reviewed. Uh, in preparing that information, we find, in our opinion, that it, it shows that the outdoor patio use is compatible, is compatible to the area and to the Chilai Avenue corridor. There are other outdoor uh, dining uses within close proximity to this property and that it would not be a detriment uh, to the neighborhood. Uh, we did receive comments from the DRC back uh, uh, in late June such that on June 26, we did provide supplemental information to our application uh, at the request 
of the DRC, and that basically involved uh, splitting some drawings up to make them a little bit more clear, providing landscaping and lighting information. We also received the town engineer's letter um, uh, dated June 28th and submitted written responses to that uh, yesterday on the 8th of July. Uh, basically, we believe we are comfortable that we'll be able to address all of those comments uh, such that we believe they can be the, a, a condition of uh, hopefully site plan approval that the board would consider this evening. I've mentioned a couple times signage. Uh, given that not all of the tenants are known at this time, uh, we acknowledge that the sign package like would be a separate application to the town of Chai Lai because once we know all the tenants, then we'll know what the size of the signs may end up being, whether any variances are needed, uh, whether what lighting standards would be required. So we look at uh, keeping that as a separate application because it will be so tenant driven. And, but we acknowledge that it is something we would have to come back and do. Uh, the final thing I have is as it relates to Seeker, uh, this in our opinion, it is a type two action per section 617.52 and eight, because basically uh, uh, Seeker uh, defines this as type two when it's a rehabilitation and or a reuse of an existing commercial building as a permitted use, including specially permitted uses in the zoning district. So we feel we comply with those two components and thus it would be type two, uh, type two seeker action. So with that, myself or uh, the representatives from uh, the developer could answer any questions that you have. Joe, the uh, two drive up windows, um, you feel that you've got adequate number of spaces in there so you don't end up backing up? <clears throat> I mean, I think of the uh, McDonald's up here that sometimes they're backed up to Chile Avenue. Um, we do for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, the types of users that are being considered are more, they're not a QSR type. It's more of a fast casual type. And, and what the difference there is, is uh, these are mobile pickup windows. In other words, um, you know, the, the person has ordered whatever they've ordered on their mobile app. This just saves them from going inside to pick it up off the shelf. So <coughs> the point is, the food is prepared and ready because they get an alert that says okay. it's ready. So mm -hmm. it moves a lot quicker. The other thing, though, too, yes, there's always the potential for cues, is because of the, the site layout of this building and the fact that there's complete four-sided access, which includes complete bypass that, you know, if, if, if there is backup or whatever, there's plenty of room on the site itself for that traffic to uh, stack on site before it would ever get to um, either of the uh, public highways. Uh, the dumpster location, I know you don't have any, any the dumpster location, no, you don't have any good spots for it but right. it seems awkward to get a truck in there unless you're just going to do totes or something like that uh, no look you first of all you're right it was it was difficult to locate the dumpster enclosure here uh because uh if we're familiar with the property um you know with paul road here chai Lai avenue here um the grade drops off Mm -hmm. dynamically here so there was nothing really we could do off the east side we wanted to stay away from this area it's the front yard so it really kind of left us this corner here um, but we do believe we looked at the circulation there if, if they come in off of Paul Road they can circulate around here access the dumpster back out and circulate through or if they come through Chai Lai Avenue, yes, they have to loop all the way around. But uh, the point is to access these, it would be a northbound traffic movement. But that was also the part of keeping that full, uh, you know, 26 foot wide access around the building to facilitate that movement also. That's all I've got. So, Peter, you, you addressed the Chipotle there, is, but I see with the Panera, and we talked about this at 6 o'clock, too, there, there, is that a traditional Panera drive-through where I can order at the kiosk? Yes, so um, that is a good clarification. Thank you. 
So uh, if the food service operator that would be located at the <coughs> north end of the building, I guess, which I have said, that would likely have a traditional ordering kiosk. So um, that would be a, a two-stop process uh, in that regard. But um, um, so that would be included. Uh, the detail on the kiosk would be part of the building permit application because it will be a branded or feature, I guess, is maybe the best word. Yep. Okay. And and we did talk about that at 6 o'clock, too, and I, I just, to say it out loud and get it in the minutes, I think even when McDonald's redid theirs and when Taco Bell did theirs, we did have that submission where we got to see that kiosk. So we're going to want to see what that looks like just to make sure that there isn't, you know, uh, the opportunity that maybe it is a masonry base or, it, you know, depending on the traffic here, like what does it actually, what does it actually look like? So at some point, to, to, I guess to your point is, is it's got to come through somebody to make sure that we see it and know that it's not bright pink and you know, flashing and, lights. And we would be able to do that as part of the sign package. Okay. Because that, our the kiosks and stuff, that's all part of branding. Yep, so, agreed. So when we are doing whatever we have to do, we know the sign package has to come back. Yep. So the, if there is a kiosk involved, it would be included with that package. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, and to stay on that for a minute, I guess, to, to add on to what you said earlier um, with the AAC, I think is any other architectural building lighting you had mentioned the signage, but also any other, if there was any other things that you guys were proposing to do or going to do, it'd be good to make sure we at least see the cut sheets on those. Not that they have to come back to Architectural Advisory Committee, but we did kind of talk about goosenecks potentially. If it's just wall packs, we're still going to want to see some kind of a cut sheet on that, yep. either if it's the planning board or whatever, right? Um, and, and like you said, agree with the coming back on signage. Everything else I think is great. Um, I would add into one of the things that we talk mostly about, which is where the dormers are being removed and the signage band is coming in. I think as you talk about your signage package and resubmission, we should just make sure, because you guys are going to right size that, we're going to probably get a little more detail and look at the lights. I think we should just make sure we say that out loud in the minutes so that that doesn't just go through when we build that and then worry about the signs later. Right. Yes, we un yeah we acknowledge and understand that when we talk about signage package, it will be uh, number of signs, yep. total square footage of the signs, um, and broken down if there's separate sign bands, all of that detail, lettering, what is the proposed lighting, and whether it complies with code or not. And at the AAC meeting, uh, the developer said it is their intent to comply with the code. Yep. Um, so lighting, but yes, uh, we'll also have the architectural information of how this sign band here will tie into the existing roof. Um, so, so, and then we'll also have the information on the order kiosk. Point being, we understand it has to be a complete um, sign pack. When I when we say sign package, it is a complete package on brand colors, materials, lighting. Uh, yep. architectural detail okay perfect thank you and then just to stay on something else here with the the I guess I'll just say the Panera drive through at the north there um, so one of the things that I'm seeing here because I go to the Panera drive through in Parenton is the cross I hate the fact that they have a crosswalk that comes right across and across that drive line of traffic I as a drive through person I don't like that, but it connects the parking lot from the back side. So one of the things I noticed here is, is you have the aluminum fence blocking off so you don't have people wandering out into that lane. Correct. However, we don't have any pedestrian connection from those parking spots on that, you know, drawing north. Yeah, we don't have any, like if I park, no one's ever going to park there because there's no way to get across and they don't want to walk across that traffic. So I guess my question is, is could we look at some kind of a, pedestrian uh, connection. Yeah, because I know, for instance, now we acknowledge like the stop bars here. Yep. But let's strike it and sign it. Yep. Sure. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be anything more than that, but. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep, and you talked about the masonry on the dumpster enclosure. Um, and you did, you did allude to that 
think, Matt, you had mentioned you have three of the five tenants signed up. And is is the it's is it the Panera and the Chipotle? Or are you not allowed to say yet? Or Can't you, yeah. your name, please, sir. Oh, sorry, uh, Matt Lester uh, with uh, Rounding Third LLC. Thank you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I guess I guess the, the reason I'm asking is I'm trying to understand or gauge the importance of the outdoor seating for both of them. I think it's nice. Um, I think it's a good idea, and I don't I don't have an issue with it. But I'm just asking, like, if that's something where that's why we're doing it, and those are the ones, then it just maybe ties it together for the special use permit, I guess. That, that's all I've got right now, Mike. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we would point out, the, and we did um, include the outdoor seating in the parking calculations. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, in Unit 76, that accounted for 32 outdoor seats. Okay. Somewhere in the paperwork, I did read where they wanted to try to come up with an escape lane in these drive throughs I don't see how that's being accomplished with what you have there presently. So, um, in this instance, uh, for the eastern drive-through lane, we have the bypass lane um, along um, the east property line. Is that is that curbing though? Raised curbing in that area that it's showing on this map, or at, no? At the the larger part will be curved. Yes, landscaping curved. The, the, this proposed user would likely be a pickup window only. In other words, they're going there because they know their order is ready. Okay. Such that what they will go in there because they know they are picking up their order. It's not getting into a queue and going, well, I'm not waiting any longer to place my order. I'm getting out. Because they've already placed their order. Um, so it's, it, my point is it's a, it's a different concept. It's not, it's not a drive through It's a pickup window. Okay, up on the up on this end, we have the two lanes in, but we've truncated the the existing median uh, that was there for um, the current drive-through. That median extends the whole length. Of, we're removing uh, this portion of it, such that again, if you get in here before the order kiosk, you would be able to uh, bail out and get into the through traffic lanes uh, to the north. For some reason, the way it's depicted just doesn't doesn't seem possible. But I'll take your word for it. All right. Um, mechanical wise, inside you've got an awful lot of you got to virtually gut this entire space, correct? Yep. Uh, and I don't recall if this is a wood frame structure in the top or not. I don't know that answer myself. All right. But you got the the mechanicals. The sprinklers are still in them going to be in place yes yep and everything's coming through the central room so to speak yeah the mechanical room is located uh, in this corner here mm -hmm. okay and the existing water line comes in off of Chile Avenue comes in there it's metered in backflow has the backflow pr protection and then it's split to its domestic service and then the sprinkler system and then the FDC connection. Does it presently have a backflow preventer, or do you still have to submit for that? Um, we will submit for a new one, yes. Yep. That's all I got. <coughs> you said there's going to be a master backflow? Yes. Or an individual master? It'll be a, 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 a master backflow for the, uh, the existing service that comes in. That's the way the Water Authority and the Health Department will, will want it done. That'll be located internally? Yes. yes. Correct. Yep. Yeah, it's in the northeast corner of the building. Mechanical room. Mechanical room. Yep. Yep. All right. That's all I got right now. Where the uh, dumpsters located? I think that's below Chile Avenue by 10, 15 feet, maybe 20 About feet. 12 feet. 12 feet. Okay. And it's behind a small uh, retaining wall. Correct. That's going to be yes. masonry to match the brick of the building. Yes. 
Okay. Um, I know you have a lot of landscaping in the islands, but you're taking out landscaping along Charlie Avenue, Paul Road area, other than around the signs. Um, so one of the things we looked at was to have some more landscaping in there. I don't. I know you don't want to block the building. We don't want to block the building, but people are going to be looking at the top of the dumpster and, and the back of it. So I think there should be landscaping around that that dumpster. Um, they're also going to be looking down at the drive-through here. So I believe there should be some landscaping along that top. Um, and the entire project will need one percent of the project cost needs to be in landscaping. So um, I think you could find a lot of spots to put landscaping even along the retaining wall. Um, although that's probably a lot less uh, going to do much of anything on Paul Road. Have you sent this to the Conservation Committee or Landscape Plan? Do you have a licensed architect landscape plan that you've submitted? Yes, that was, yes. Okay, that, so what, what we have in the islands is it, right? That's what we submitted. Okay. Yes. So I'd like to see more landscaping along the, uh, the front edge of this building. And I think it should go to our conservation committee to have them take a look at it to review what you're putting in. Did they look at it on the 1st of July? They did. Okay. So if you could send that to them, we get their recommendation as well. And then the protection for the outdoor dining. I know you have a decorative aluminum fence. Is there any other protection so people can't drive up into that dining area? Uh, it it, it is ray, it's race curve, so it'll be the six inch reveal concrete. Curve. So that's it. Yeah. So is there room to put some planters even around there, or something that would block a vehicle? Like every outdoor dining area we've had so far, we've required some sort of bollards or protection to people that are sitting in the dining area from a vehicle that either uh, by accident or intentionally drives into that area. Um, yeah, I think we can look at doing planters. That Something big enough to stop a vehicle. Yeah. A curb's not going to stop a vehicle. Right. right. Bollard. Yeah, even sometimes they put them around the bollard, so you don't see the bollard, but there's a planting around it. Something to protect the area so that a vehicle can't drive up in there. <coughs> and then delivery points. Um, multiple deliveries all day, restaurants, it's multiple vendors. How are you going to handle um, deliveries, and, and where are they? Because all the loading docks have been removed. So the deliveries don't require loading docks um, no but someplace well, to deliver I mean, right <laughs> you know that i know they don't but that's where they used to get it so right but uh, the point being <laughs> with the users here they don't they don't require them so that's why we're able to remove them so it'd be a delivery um operation that's very similar to these types of uses if they were standalone um, if, if these were five individual tenant spaces and the fact that uh whatever is the vehicle of choice that is that the delivery is being made will use the access uh, routes um, and park in the access routes to make their deliveries. Uh, but it's also why we've ensured we have the four-sided circulation patterns. Um, deliveries are timed by the, um, the individual operators based on their their operations, but the deliveries will be contained on site. So for each of these tenants, they would bring their deliveries through the front doors. Like Panera, I don't see I don't see any side door of Panera. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, some of these spaces there will be auxiliary doors in some of these spaces, but for these primary retail tenants, it would be through the front door. Okay. So the, when you say access, it'll pull up, park a park a driving lane, or or pull up into the parking spots. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Any idea what size trucks they deliver, or can they control that, so that yeah. we don't. I can't necessarily answer that, except from the the, the um, except from the standpoint of <coughs> it's how many times they want to get deliveries. You know, part of it is and how much they can store. Mm -hmm. Also, so um, they base that on their own operations, how quickly they're turning product over or whatever. Um, but also, our experience working with with tenants like this is they size the truck to also what the site can accommodate. And do, do, where you see the drive up where they're just picking up is not an order kiosk? Is there indoor dining there? Yes. Okay. No outdoor dining though, correct? It's just the one atop the Panera there? No, there's two patios. Mm -hmm. the oh, that is the one in the back there is for dining as well? Yeah. Okay. So you same treatment back there as the other one. I thought there was just one. Okay. Yes. Yep. All right. Um, I don't think I... 
Uh, and, I, and I think I'll disagree. I don't think this is a type two action. You're rehabilitating a building. You're remodeling it completely to change the type of use that was in there. Correct. And um, you're also getting a special use permit in order to use it. Correct. So However. I'd love to have an opinion from our side table on that before we do seeker. <coughs> I have my type two left and right. <coughs> Go ahead. So there's both indoor and outdoor dining in both of the uh, restaurant. Yes. Okay. And then in the uh, patio areas, besides the aluminum fence, is there any um, awnings or vertical protection from our tropical no. climate? No. no. So that's seasonal use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Are you looking at putting up any type of um, uh, monument sign, directory sign, plaza sign, so, uh, up on top of the hill, on any any place? What the intent is, there's an existing monument sign today, is that that base will be uh, retained and it'll be part of the site package that will come in, or sign package, excuse me, that comes in, is that will be um, reconfigured to be the multi-tenants. Okay. But it'll be on that same base that's there today. That'll all be going to zoning? Say that again? Will that all be going to zoning? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. The sign, monument sign? Did yes. Did we do that, rework that? Yes. Any changes to signing that's already there would go in front of? Yep. To make sure, well, if it'd have to meet the town code. Yes. Or you'd exactly. have to go to zoning. We'll start with the town code. Right. If it goes to the town code, then it wouldn't have to go to zoning. Right. Anything else from the side table before we open public comment? Yes. Uh, just so the south, southeasterly tenant doesn't have a kiosk, right? At this time, correct. And if it did, it would all come part of the sign package, right? Correct. Uh, I need a breakdown of the cost of the plantings, the cost of construction. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, please include your planters that they've now requested because yeah. that will count as part of your landscaping. Right. <coughs> Where is provisions made for storage of the exterior furniture? I don't have Something that. Something to ask your tenants. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because I don't have that answer. Okay. Um, when Go ahead, they, they, sometimes they'll remove the furniture off site and rent storage units. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just don't want it stacked up yeah. next to the. It's. <laughs> it <be> walk away. <laughs> um, to the chairman's point about the dumpster enclosure. Right now, I believe there's a wrought iron fence on top of the retaining wall. Mm -hmm. So the retaining wall or the dumpster enclosure would be probably taller than the retaining wall, correct? I think it's slightly this because it'll be a six foot um, enclosure. So you terminate the wrought iron into the dumpster enclosure, is that the intent? I'll have to look at that. I don't possibly just <coughs> for landscape screening as he yeah. suggested. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, here's the, the fencing here. Yep. Yeah, so we, I think what we will do is just what's been suggested about um, landscaping around that fencing. Um, and so we'll look at what we have to do with that fencing as it relates to the we weren't really thinking of changing that fencing at all um, because the enclosure wasn't going to come off of the retaining wall. They were going to be two separate elements. We don't propose disturbing the retaining wall at all. So we just thought the wall would stay with the fencing and then the enclosure would just. But you're going to use the wall and the fencing as the back end, in essence, of your dumpster enclosure? We or were you're going to build a new back end? We were going to put a new back end and we were going to <coughs> separate elements because we didn't want to um, uh, disturb the integrity of the wall that's there. 
Okay. And that even includes somebody ramming a dumpster against it. Mm -hmm. you know? right. so, right. so that's why I said there are two distinctly different elements. Okay. Okay. Wasn't really clear from the drawings. Um, can you explain the snow storage pattern on this? Um, it would primarily be. Um, is is the snow storage would just be pushing it off of the um, the ends of the parking lot to the north and to the west. Um, we can't do anything east because of the, the grade changes in, in the fencing and guide rail that's there. We won't be doing anything to the north either because remember it's a five foot oh, right. retaining wall. Yes, correct. I'm sorry. Yes. So that leaves you west and south. Mm -hmm. Something to consider there. A plan for that should be considered. What, what was previously done with the lobby? Good question. <laughs> it's been so long since Walgreens was there. What was that? What was the question? I don't think I can remember. What did Walgreens uh, do? Mr. Lester <laughs> asked what was previously done when Walgreens was there. And for a snow storage standpoint, for the life of me. I, I think typically with our property management company, you know, we, we figure it out that the you know, operational you know, nuances that we have to see, and then we'll typically find the person from the door. As most people do, the parking spot, you know, convenient area that allows for proper drainage, and we'll use we use the snow storage in that location. So it's hard to predict um, today, but we'll, we certainly are active when we're in the management company. If we can remove the snow from the site because there isn't an appropriate place to store it, we will do that too. And <coughs> but I'll ask the uh, former um, property owner if they remember what the snow storage after the light of me, I can't yeah. remember what he did. We're going to use it differently anyway, so I don't think it's going to fly. You done? Uh, yeah. Why, did you have something? I had something to ask. <laughs> okay, then. Mm -hmm. um, I, he's writing. I have a couple of comments. Um, for, for the near the dumpster enclosure area, since you're now you're changing to a masonry instead of the board on board, um, please pay attention to where, how it's going to affect that uh, catch basin, because the masonry is going to block the flow to that catch basin. So you may need to extend extend one and put one on the other side of the dumpster enclosure. Yeah, that, we've talked about that uh, in, in our office, whether it's an extension of the inlet that's in here, up to here, or we actually may uh, do a carve out in the bottom of the structure here to allow the water to flow in there. Um, we, we're checking our spot elevations there, uh, just, okay, just I, be the best solution. Uh, yeah, personally, I recommend extending it because if, if you just have an opening inside the dumpster enclosure and it gets clogged for any reason, whether it's snow, or other debris that clogs up the opening, then you're, you, the flow won't be able to reach the catch basin. Um, to um, one of the board members' comments regarding the northern parking across to, to, to make that usable, um, it would seem that you're gonna to need to put some type of a sidewalk or a, a crossing across the landscaped area so that when they're trying to, rather than having walking around the end of that landscaped area in the driving aisles so that they can walk directly across it and, and across the striped area to the to the sidewalk in front of the building. At, at this location here you're talking about? Yes. Okay, so you have the you have the raised the raised landscaped area. Mm -hmm. But I would foresee that you would need to provide a sidewalk 
across that through the through the center of the landscaping to enable, enable those people to safely cross so they're not walking around the end of it in the drive lane yeah the well we're going to want to look at that because of the fact is is we have the fencing there is what we want but that fencing can't stay there Pardon? that fencing can't stay there at the end of that sidewalk it's to make it, it makes it too dangerous for people to walk around everything but that's my point because we don't want people coming out of the food service at, and taking a hard right into the drive-through aisle that fencing there is to, for lack of better ways to contain people off of the drive-through aisle well you've got to do something because you, otherwise that northern parking area is, is going to be basically useless or it's going to be a very it's going to be a very dangerous well or area to walk from the thought was um was the fact that that likely would be where the employees <laughs> Uh, for the multi-tenants because there will be a number of employees there with the five tenants and that that would be employee parking and the customer parking would be in the dual access space that have the designated uh, crossings pedestrian crossings but also leading them to the sidewalk system that is located well, um, around the perimeter it, of it, it, regardless of whether it's customer or employee parking it still needs to have safe safe access to the building the other thing I, I would propose we consider is um, the, the, the fencing would be encompassed on the patio, and we still maintain a sidewalk across the front. Yeah, the we front. can see that. And then that would remain as it was currently with the crosswalk being across the drive through. Well, that, well, that's what I'm saying. You need to have a crosswalk across the drive, yeah. the drive through, yeah. and some and a and a place place to cross the planter because they're going to do it they're going to do it anyhow whether you whether you actually plan for it and put something in or people just walk across it and create a path anyhow so your point what i think might make the most sense and we're happy to accommodate is we'll we'll take the patio area in front of the allegedly panera bread <laughs> um, and we'll bring it we'll return it to itself so there'll still be a, a crosswalk and a pedestrian lane across the front of the storefronts, mm -hmm. across the drive-through. We'll do a crosswalk and a yield sign. So they, you know, typically when you pick up your food, you look up before you drive. Typically, um, and then we'll theory that across um, to get to the, uh, the lower part, as it was like for Walgreens. I think they did have a crosswalk. Okay, there. that's 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 what I was trying to get at. Yeah, yes, that, I think that's a good solution. Is that I know that there was a comment about the board um, having a fence there. But what do you say about the board? Is it the emergency? Right. So the private, yeah. I think we're all saying the same thing. You probably just need to draw it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we've got to get a pedestrian crossing from that north lot. Yeah. This is that because they corner have of this, that the, 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 the provided <coughs> here, that it's going to be a place of order. You see, it's going to stay. Drop yeah. for me. There you go. Yeah. 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 This place can yeah, but if, if, if the patio will, this guy will close off, the DZ is going to pull ahead, right? Mm -hmm. This guy is screwed. He's not. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one last, one last kind of one, one comment about your. Uh, your landscaping in these uh, raised areas. Okay, at, at the ends where the cars exit the drive-through areas, you currently have um, specified a fragrance sumac. And I was looking it up, that can grow five to 10 feet tall. There is a dwarf version of it. And any plantings that are, that are there at the exits of the drive-through the drive -through lane need, can't be any, any higher than three feet tall. Okay. Um, so there is a dwarf version of that fragrance sumac that you can get, but that needs to be specified in the planning materials to use that dwarf version because we want to make sure that anybody's exiting it, they don't have any plantings blocking their view when they're trying to pull out. Okay. Right? That's it. Thank you. Anything else? Yes, sir. Explain to me the emergency egress of So what you're saying is in here? Yeah, my concern. Oh, put it on outside. Sorry. <laughs> my concern would be is that the interior <coughs> order or customer, if they had to get out for some reason, the outside guy's gonna block them in. 
So would sh shortening the island up and allowing for a more striped area be something to consider? We, we, we've discussed that because it definitely can be done. It was just a function of how much land, but based on other conversations we've had this evening of where we can pick up additional landscaping, I think that is the logical way to do it is to strike that. I, I will just comment that the statistics of that user on that pickup, what they call it a Chipotle lane, <coughs> um, it will not exceed two cars for more than 15 minutes a day from a stack. Are you on the southeastern? Uh, I'm on the northern. I'm on the south. I'm on the non kiosk. Yeah, that's the stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so basically, based, that's a different. Sorry. That this, uh, this here, right? This area here mm -hmm. is striped, right? Yeah. 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 Right now, we don't have. It's not. It's not a medium. It's not proposed to be a medium, so we will strike it. Yeah. Invariably, somebody's going to order on that outside kiosk, pull ahead to try and. Mm -hmm. be the next guy in line, right? Mm -hmm. And he's blocked. There's just no easy way out. Yeah. yeah. Something kind of McDonald's kind of the similar need. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you visit the McDonald's down here, I believe you can pull up. Sometimes you have to wait for things. And you can drive right past them. Go on the outside. Yeah. It's yeah. too late. Yeah. 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 So. Another comment regarding the license. The existing landscaping that's there. Um, along Paul Road, where that retaining wall is between the, between the parking lot and the retaining wall, the existing landscaping there is really gone wild and everything. So, when you're doing your landscape plan, if you could address that, your property landscaping plan, that would be appreciated. And you're referring to? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's kind of elevated up high anyway. Yo, sir, Paul. You caused more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This time I'll open the uh, public hearing portion of the application. Anybody from the audience like to be heard? Yes, sir. If you could state your name and your address. My name is Adam Zaluka. I reside at uh, 3134 Chile Avenue, the property directly across from Walgreens. And uh, I support you guys for developing and implementing it. I just have questions about the traffic flow. Also, the landscaping. Uh, could you talk into the microphone so we can hear, please? Landscaping <coughs> directly in front of Thank my you. house that I look out my kitchen window onto. Uh, there's two benches there. One of them has been collapsed for quite some time, and uh, just wondering what the redevelopment plan would be for those. Okay. Any other questions? Be hang on a minute. Any other questions before you hear any of statements? Get an idea of, of my, my concern is traffic. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Would anybody else like to be heard? Okay. This time, I'd make a motion to close the public hearing portion of the. Second. Yes. 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 I also vote yes. Um, Peter, could you answer if those benches are part of this property or are they owned by somebody else? Right along Chile Avenue, I think. Yeah, they're not part of. They're not so, part of the Walgreens property. They think they're. Was the house that we were talking about? No, directly across. If you look at the. Uh, On this side. Yes. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and do that? My house is right next to the Right. It's right across from the, right. Yeah, it's right here, right? You can see it on this Right? Yeah, so right in this area here, there are two concrete benches that one has collapsed and just doesn't look great. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. So I didn't know if that was part of this property. We don't own it yet. Okay, I think, you, I think what you're looking for is to remove them. 
if okay. Or just do something. All right. So Thank you. We'll all right. Just all right. We'll work with them to do that. Um, I just heard from one of the other planning board members that Walgreens, they believe, put them there. Oh, okay. So it's probably part of your property or part of the development that went in there. Yeah. And I think that's what we would want is to have them removed. I'm not sure why they're even there, but to remove them uh, and okay. clean that area up. Thank you. Yeah. And I just wanted to know about the flow of traffic. You know, from, I know it kind of wides out right there. It's, Sorry, you um, go. But it doesn't wide out two lanes right at the entrance and exit of the on the track. So this is going to be one way heading this way? Okay. And then you will be able to circulate this site this way in the two way on these three. So that will okay. answer your question as far as how the site is. So the, tri the, the driveway on Chile Avenue is entrance and exit, turn right or left, left or right, and then the exit on Paul Road is right or right only or right only out, left or right only in. Right. There's no changes proposed. Correct. Turning left. I think what they probably do is turn right here and make a left and a right. That would be my movement. As I use this, but I don't think you're going to have the distance between the light to protect you when this is red. That'll allow for a left safe. Right, because right. there's not a lot of space. You live there, yeah. so yeah, I don't know. I'm just worried about traffic back. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm not traffic back. Yeah, I don't. I don't think this is going to impede your access in and out. Um, it will be a long stack, and then I think if this does seem to stack up, we do have. If anything does happen, call them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, additional board discussion. I think a few things were brought up. We got to look at what this bypass drive through is going to look like. We got to look at the landscape recommendation from the Conservation Committee, the protection of the outdoor dining, the dumpster enclosure, and then this pedestrian crossing. I'm still a little confused how that's going to work safely, quite honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to see that on paper because when you walk from that building or anywhere from the north, you basically have to walk across the driveway, around that island, across the drive through, and around the dining area, and then in. So. We'd love to see what that's going to look like on uh, paper to see what that, how safe that's going to be. And what other items came up that we wanted to look uh, drive through island, landscaping, wild overgrowth? Were there, were there any other items that we want to see addressed? I know the AAC had some items, but they were mostly addressed. You're just going to have a follow up, correct? Yeah, note 17 on there. I finally tracked that down, Peter. <laughs> I see that now. So you're, we're covered because it's on there about the signage package. Coming oh, got out. it. All right. All right. Any other discussion or comments? So this is for two things, preliminary site plan and the special use for the outdoor dining. We would do two separate votes on them, but once I hear from Matt, we'll decide <laughs> the seeker for the special use. I think it, it depends if the board thinks that it's a substantial enough change. I mean, I, I, okay. I, I think it is myself. So I think we should do seeker. Um, yeah, and we did provide the short form EAS. You did. <laughs> I know. I've read it. <laughs> we hedged our bets. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other further board discussion? Anything else from the side table? Do you have a start date? A start date. Uh, yeah, we, we hope to acquire the property within 90 days and we you are know, pending a successful site plan approval. Uh, we still have to acquire the property, do our building plans, we're looking at, you know, end of the year. So we'd like to get, because it's already an existing building, so we could work through winter on the inside and start to do some significant improvements. So this year, we're hopeful. What's the planned uh, construction term? How long before you're ready to uh, I think open? Most of the <coughs> Q225, no later than that, we should be fully 
operational. So you're going to start and complete. You have, as, soon as, as, soon as, as soon as it's done, you're going to complete the project and get it moving, get it opened. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. So as far as Seeker, they did the traffic. Anybody have any problems with that traffic study, the impact study? I read that. I think that looked good. Very good. All right. The landscaping will come in. Um, sounds like they've addressed all the other, or will be addressing the other engineering issues. You don't have any issues with that? Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to declare the board lead agency as far as Seeker, and based on evidence and information presented at this meeting, determine the application to be an unlisted action with no significant environment impact. Do I have a second on so Seeker? Yes. 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 I also vote yes. Let's start with the um, special use permit. So for the special use permit, the conditions that I have uh, listed are the town engineer and the commissioner of public works must be given copies of any correspondence with other approving agencies. Um, pending approval of the zoning board of appeals for all required variances, applicant to comply with all conditions, all conditions of the zoning board of appeals as applicable, any signage change to comply with the town code, including obtaining sound permits, sign permits. Any other conditions for the special use permit? All right. With those conditions, um, the application of Rounding Tree LLC, 1657 East Avenue, Rochester, New York, 14610. The applicant, Rochester W LLC, 355 Third Avenue, 28th Floor, New York, 10017 owner, for a um, special use permit to allow outdoor dining space to property located at 3127 Chile Avenue, the former Walgreens. Second. Second. Yes. 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 I also vote yes for the special use permit. Conditions for the preliminary site plan approval. Let's see. Have the approval is subject to final approval of the town engineer and the commissioner of, commissioner of public works. Town engineer and the commissioner of public works must be given copies of any correspondence with other approving agencies. Um, Paul, there is an easement for the drainage, correct, to the right? Do we have an easement for that, the town? Yes. Okay. Copies of all easements associated with this project shall be provided to the assistant town council for approval and all filing information, i.e. library and page number, shall be noted on the mylars. Prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, all easements are to be filed and recorded with the Monroe County Clerk and filed, recorded, and acknowledged by the Town of Chile Clerk. Applicant to comply with all pertinent Monroe County Development Review Committee comments. Applicant to comply with all required life safety conditions and permits from the Town Fire Marshal. Paul, any uh, Zoning Board of Appeals for this? I think for the property they were already granted for the front parking, et cetera, et cetera, in the past. Okay, so that doesn't, preliminary site plan does not need to go to zoning, correct? <laughs> we can make that in a condition at final then, correct? If we need to. <laughs> All right. Any signage change shall comply with the town code, including obtaining sound permits, sign permits. The applicant uh, shall supply a landscape plan drawn by a licensed landscape architect along with the required checklist to the conservation board for review and recommendation. The applicant shall provide landscaping equivalent to 1% of the total project cost. Upon completion of the project, the applicant shall submit a land, landscape certificate of compliance to the building department from the landscape architect certifying that all approved plantings have been furnished and installed in substantial conformance with the approved landscape plan. <clears throat> the planning board affirms the recommendation of the architectural advisory committee and requests that the applicant comply with those recommendations. Building permits shall not be issued prior to the applicant complying with all conditions. Application is subject to all required permits, inspections, code compliance regulations. No outdoor storage is allowed. And are there any other conditions? Yes. Um, uh, 
the Linda the Commission of Public Works as, as I outlined in my review letter and asked that they provide a uh, inspection report from the existing stormwater management plan and the, uh, and, the, and the storm sewers. So if you can possibly make that a condition that they provide that report. Sure. Retention pond, did you say, in storm sewers? Yeah, it's called a stormwater pond inspection report. Let me read this back to you, Mike, make sure I have all of it. Provide, the, provide an inspection report uh, for the stormwater management system and associated sewers, including design capacity is still sufficient as designed. The hydrodynamic system must be cleaned and determined to be functional. Does that cover what Dave was looking for? All right, which you'll need to approve before this goes anywhere, correct? Okay. I'll add that condition. Any other conditions? Okay. With those conditions listed, the application of Rounding Tree Third LLC, Rounding Third LLC, 1657 East Avenue, Rochester, New York, 14610. The applicant, Rochester W LLC, 655 Third Avenue, 28th Floor, New York, 10017. Owner, for a preliminary site plan approval to convert the existing building to a multi-tenant space located at 3127 Charlie Avenue, the former Walgreens in a GB district. Second. Yes. 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 I also vote yes. It's approved for preliminary and special use. I'll set. Thank you. You're welcome. The oh, first step. Yeah, it was the first application on the public hearings, the application of Schultz Associates PC, 129 South Union Street, Spenceport, New York, 14559 applicant, effortless, effortless real estate, LLC, 1440 Scottsville Road, New York. 14624 owner for a preliminary site plan approval to erect a walk-in cooler property located at 1440 Scottsville Road in the GB district. Um, the applicant has requested that this be tabled for a future meeting, so that applicant will not be heard tonight. Any other business before the board? Uh, approval of last month's meeting minutes. We have a second for the approval of last month's meeting minutes. Yes. 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 I also vote yes. Any other business before the board? Meeting is adjourned.